All right, use regular expressions for patterns, for relatively more complex patterns. Last time we learned a like operator, like. So that's only for partial string matching and a simple pattern. Yeah. Yeah. But in order to describe some relatively more complex patterns, we have to use more powerful tool. So those regular expressions, very powerful string pattern description tool. Yeah. All right. Question, list the name and address for those employees whose addresses satisfy the condition. The street number has exact four digits. Look at that. So this time we need to describe some information in a more precise way. Yeah. So you can imagine if we use like operator, it's very hard to describe this pattern. Exactly, exact four digits, street number. Okay. Yeah. First, we know must be in digits, but in our like operator, we cannot describe digits. We only, we describe characters. We use question mark for single, but we cannot separate digit, alphabet, different types of characters. Yeah. Question marks, you know, uh, not, you know, uh, punctuations. We cannot distinguish those different symbols. But here in regular expression, we, we can do that precise description. So look at, yeah, here we only need to focus on this pattern, exact four digits. First must be digits. Second must be four digits. Street number. Street number, we know the location at the beginning of address. That's the street number location. Okay. So let's use that information to describe. All right, the first thing uh, you can see, we use an operator, reg exp, that's the regular expression operator. Okay, address should match the regular expression. We tell the DBMS, Use regular expression rules. Describe it in the following string to match the pattern. Yeah. Now let me describe. Yeah. So here, some of you, if you recall a little bit in Unix, probably you still you remember, you know, some rules. Here we just review. So if you cannot remember, yeah. So let's review. Another time, yeah. First, look at that symbol. Yeah. The, the hat symbol, like a hat, okay, yeah. Beginning, so this symbol matches beginning of the string. So when you start, start, you need to start with digits. In bracket zero dash nine, that's the digit, single character digit description, single character, only one character, but the range for that character from zero through nine, that's the range, zero dash nine, one of the digits, but only for one character, okay? No. All right, then after that, curly braces. Curly braces after that pattern, single character pattern. There is a number here, four. That means the previous pattern should be repeated four times. Okay, the digit character repeated four times. That's the four digit address number. Okay, yeah, look at that, how precise it is. All right, but after that, after four digit, 
anything because definite address has more character than the four digit number so after those four digits we have more characters how do you describe the remaining characters first thing you only match four digit string number but you cannot match five digit string number five digit no okay do not select five more than four digit string numbers so how do you represent exact four digit no more than four digits so look at after that curly brace is four after the here for there is a space character yeah. do not ignore that space character all right that means after four digits a space character must be right after it that will stop five digits digit cases right more than four digit cases so here you can see regular expression you have to represent all the information in a very accurate way. Yeah. like this one okay like this simple example so very accurate then after that no description after after that character uh, space character no description that means any character is allowed after so here four digits space character that remaining you no know, no restriction no description so any character is allowed after that space character okay yeah if we do not describe any rule any character is allowed okay yeah all right so that is so this example so the remaining you know no restriction on it yeah remaining part all right yeah so this is our first regular ex expression example yeah. all right let me see one chat message oh sinahuja all right yeah i will check your yeah check your name uh yeah I finished the slide. Okay, yeah. yeah so, we, and we finished part B. Yeah. So let me go to part C. Yeah. And in part D, uh, we will most most of our time we will work on regular expressions. Part D. First, let me check uh, Sindhuja's name first here. All right. Then I switch to part C, today's topic. All right. All right. All right, part C, insert and update statements. C.1, insert statements. All right. First, the simplest case. The simplest form, insert is used to add a single row, a tuple row, to a table, relation table. Yeah. So, let's consider this case we must specify the relation name table name and a list of values for the tuple here you can see it does not mention attributes right it does not mention the attribute list okay yeah so for this version you do not need to specify attribute list. Why? Because DBMS will use the table definition to 
fail that part, attribute this part. Yeah. All right. The values should be listed in the same order, but here the order is important because if you use the default attribute list, you have to follow the same order. Yeah. Otherwise, because the DBMS will use the table definition, the attribute order in the table definition, yeah. in which the corresponding attributes were specified. Yeah. Create table command, table definition. Yeah. Look at this example, employee. We want to insert a role into that employee table. Insert into table name employee. Yeah. After that, we do not provide attribute list. Now, this is the first version. Okay. Attribute list, we have second version. Okay. Yeah. Here, the first version, because we need to insert values for all attributes. If for all attributes, we take this version. You, if you need to go through all attributes, then you use the simple version. Okay, yeah. So that is, you need to provide values. Then follow the current attribute order in the table definition. The first one, first name or last name, yeah. Middle, you know, yeah, you know. Last name, middle, initial, first name, social security number, date of birth, address, you know, sex, uh, salary, right? Supervisors, social security number, department number, all right? Following those orders. That's the first example. That simple, straightforward. Yeah. But if you write this insertion statement manually, usually how can you memorize the attribute order? Right? In this many, here we have 10 attributes. Remember our employee table, there are 10 attributes. How can you memorize the order of that, those 10 attributes? So you have to look at the table definition. All right, yeah. Then, all right, so another thing, yeah. So here, look at the data. Data, basically, uh, we have string data, right? We have integer data and a date data. Date, data, date of birth, date data, okay, yeah. Can you notice something special here? Something special? Yeah, I remember I, I didn't talk about that before, if I mentioned or not. Yeah, but here I like to give you a little more information related to the data types. Yeah, probably I mentioned, but I need to, you know, talk about that another time. Yeah. Look at here, right now, here, look at two types of data we enter. String data, integer data, string data, we use single quotes, right? Yeah. So that's the SQL, SQL standard. Yeah. But integer data, look at the salary. Salary, we use integer data. And you see no quotes around it. Yeah. Because integer data or numerical values, we do not need to in, put them in a pair of single quotes. They're not, not just integer. Float, double, we do not need to put a pair of quotes around each item. Yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, but here, here, a little more. Uh, all right, so here we're talking about string data. 
uh, numeric data, okay? Data. Data. Uh, must use a pair of single quotes, okay? Must, yeah. But for numeric data, no quotes This is the normal way. Normally, no quotes. But quotes also okay. If you put a pair of quotes around numeric data, that's also legal. No error, right? No error. DBMS allows it. No error, okay, yeah. So that's the numeric data case. Then based on this property yeah, for DVMS, then in our programming, in our programming, because in our programming, when we insert data, we need to consider sometimes numeric data type, sometimes integer data type. And uh, should we, yeah, for string values, only way using quotes. So no other option. So you do not, you do not have any option to take, but for numeric data, numeric data, okay in programming because two ways both way okay all right so which way is better which yes yeah, so here we talk we are talking about when we insert new macro data insert new macro data you have two options yeah. so which way is better so here, I, I would say no quotes way, is better. Okay, yeah. No quotes, if you have no reason to choose the other one, quotes way. Okay? If you have no reason to choose the quotes way, you should take the no quotes way. It is better. Why? Let me explain the rationale behind it. Yeah. All right, think about this. No quotes way stops the string exertion. Think about that. No quotes way, because when we, in our programs, when we insert data, sometimes we may make mistake. We may, by accident, we, we insert string into numerical values. We may do that, okay? But when you write your program, you know this is numerical data. So I do not use quotes here because I know numeric. In order to have a legal numerical value, we should not put some garbage string there. Right? All right. So we do not use quotes. Then someone may make, make mistake, try to insert string into this numeric value. You do not have quotes, then DVMs will reject it. Yeah. You do not use quotes. This is a string. Yeah. You do not use quotes. So this insertion is rejected. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, right, okay, yeah, all right, but 
there is another situation I also like to mention. Sometimes the quotes way, quotes way for numeric data is useful. <laughs> Sometimes you need to use the quotes way. Yeah, all right. So based on my experience, okay, yeah. So I need to write a query statement. In this query statement, so I have string value, numerical value, you know, mixed, you know, in a very complex way. Think about that, okay, yeah. If I try to distinguish using quotes, non-quotes, then my logic is very complicated, right? I need to check, you know, number four, number nine, number 10, you know, no quotes, you know, remaining quotes. Yeah. If I write my, you know, let's say PHP statement, it could be very complex. In that way, to make it simple, I write all in quotes. How about that? Because numerical values, if you use quotes, insertion is legal. Then you can simplify the logic. You do not need to check it's numeric or not, right? In that situation, uh, quotes way also useful for numeric value. Yeah. So here you can see, yeah, two cases. One case you want to stop wrong data type insertion. Okay. Yeah. You know, in that consideration, yeah. do not allow. Yeah wrong type inserted or oh, try to pick some error okay try to pick some error okay think about it. sometimes the string could be uh, a numerical value could be enclosed as a string right one two five seven nine okay think about that you may have a string value like this but you do not want to insert it. Oh, you do not want to. Yeah, so think about uh, if our data is a numerical value. Now you do not want to make a string inserted. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this part a little confusing yeah you know stop which one would stop the wrong data type the basic considerations stop wrong data type insertion okay yeah all right yeah so that is the first version of insertion the second version this time allow the user to specify explicit attribute names you do not need to go through all the attributes in the current list you can only do insertions on selected attributes the remaining yeah so we will discuss the remaining attributes here for the selected attributes you have to specify in the right order how do you insert the data Okay, that correspond to the values provided in the insert command. Yeah. The values must include all attributes with not null specification and no default value. Yeah. So here, let me describe the situation. Yeah. All right. Suppose this is your attribute list. list original all right yeah. then when you do one row insertion you can skip some attributes okay for example this part you can skip okay 
Another part you can also skip. You only provide selected attributes, okay? But what attributes you can skip, right? Yeah, yeah, so here, include, yeah, so here, with no value allowed, okay? Yeah, no value allowed. Okay, no value allowed. Yeah. The skip part, if no value provided, DBMS can use no value, okay? Yeah. Then another possibility with default values. No value allowed or not, it doesn't matter because you already provide default values. Okay, yeah. So we don't worry about no values allowed or not. Yeah. Because we have provided default values. Yeah. So the skipping part, you can only skip these two cases. The remaining attributes, you have to list them explicitly. Yeah. So that's the rule for the second form. So let's look at another example. Yeah, attribute with no allowed or default values are the ones that can be left out. Can be left out, <coughs> but you can also include, include them. Yeah, all right. Look at this statement. <coughs> Still employee, so this time, first name, F name, L name, department number SSN, okay, yeah, all right. So, because the remaining, if the values are not provided for the remaining attributes, the DBMS first check, are there default values provided? If the default value provided, take the default value. If, if not, not provided, then look at if there is not a null clause, if there is no not a null clause, the DBM is just use the null value. Okay, yeah. yeah. After that, after DBMS check all those things, if you still there is some attribute you do not provide a value. That it is a wrong exertion statement. So the DBMs will reject it because you do not provide default values and you do not allow no value and you do not provide the new value in the insertion statement the dbms does not know what value to be used in this insertion statement then rejection okay yeah yeah so consider those rules yeah natural quite natural yeah all right that's the second form C.2, insert multiple tuples. We just insert single tuple, but we feel single tuple insertion, although very easy to understand, but not very efficient. We want to do the insertion in a more efficient way. So we like to consider multiple Row insertion. Yeah. All right. In a single insertion command. Yeah. Because you may use this way. Let's insert single row command by command. How about that? Command one, insert row one. Command two, 
be zero too, and so on. Here, you only type one insertion command, you insert multiple rows. That's the main difference. Yeah. So let me show you. Yeah. It is also possible to insert a relation, multiples separated by commas. How do you separate different rows by commas in a single insert command? Single insert command, you know, insert into table that. Oh, yeah, so everything you want to insert, then semicolon, the end of the command. In that one command, you want to insert multiple rows. All right, so let's look at that. The attribute values forming each tuple are enclosed in parentheses. Yeah, yeah. All right, so look at this version. Insert into department. Yeah. We do not specify attribute lists. That means we use the current attribute list from beginning to end, following the given order. Yeah. Then, all right. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we have the list. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, we specify the list, right? All right. Yeah. So we use this list. But we only need to write it once, right? Attribute list in this statement, we only write it once. Then values, you can see, then multiple values separated by commas. Row one, comma, row two, comma, and so on. At the end, semicolon. The end of the command. This way, okay? That's the multiple row insertion. Yeah. If you look at our the database, the company database, I give you, if you look at the insertion part, you will see we use the multiple, multi row insertion way. The reason is simple, more efficient. It will be faster. It will be faster than single row insertion command, command after command, multiple command for multiple rows. The reason, yeah, because if you do that kind of insertion, uh, right, that insertion, you need to spend time on overhead inside DBMS to prepare one command you can imagine the DBS need to set up, need to prepare something, okay? So do some preparation, spend some resource, okay? On that overhead part, but you only do one row insertion. After that, the preparation is done. Then next command, DBS need to do preparation another time. After that preparation, only one row can insert it, then done, okay, throw away another one, repeat it in that, so that's not efficient. This multi-row insertion, you do one preparation, okay, at the beginning, set up, okay. After that preparation, do not throw away, yeah, still useful, that overhead part still useful, row two, row three, row four, you know, following that, all right? Yeah, so you save a lot of overhead part preparation. Yeah, so at the end, you reduce the execution time, the total execution time reduced. Okay, so that's the main reason. So we try out, try to use this version as much as possible when we need to insert data multi-row, multiple-row data, okay. Yeah, all right. So because of this property, yeah, next one, yeah. you can think about. There are situations we need to insert large number of rows. Yeah. Think about that, another situation. 
database import and export. Okay, database import and export. Okay, yeah. Because we may need to move our database from one server to another server, right? When you do that move, you need to export data first, then import data in a different server. When you export, you, you need to want to prepare your future insertion in an efficient way, right? Yeah. So then, how to make the future insertion more efficient? Yeah. There is some subtle consideration here using this multi role insertion. Multi role, yeah. All right. Next, I'd like to talk about the batch insertions in application programs. Batch insertions. Yeah. Each time we insert multiple roles in a batch, we define a batch job, okay? One batch job, we want to put it in one insertion statement, okay? Then another batch and so on, all right? So what is that batch? Yeah. So let's look at the details. Here, I like to use the Java version. Java JDBC has the batch support. Yeah. In Java in PHP, think about you like to insert large number of roles efficiently. Okay. Yeah. In this situation, you should use the batch insertion. Okay. So let's look at the Java way to do the batch insertion. First, we define our SQL insertion statement. Yeah. Employee, city, yeah. Here, this employee, this employee is different from our company employee table, okay? Yeah, it's different, yeah. Here you can see in, in this Java code, some, uh, you know, sometimes people also use lowercase. Yeah, so that's also, you know, quite common, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, employee, yeah. value three question marks. The values will be provided later, okay? Yeah. Then connection object, you need to create connection object. The connection object comes from get connection method. So you, you, you need to define this get connection method somewhere in your class, define this method. Yeah. But if you know JDBC, you know the standard way to create a database connection. Now we just use the standard way, database connection. Okay. Then prepare statement. In order to execute the query, you need to have this prepared statement, PS, yeah. connection dot prepare statement, pass that SQL command to it. All right, so that's the preparation part. Yeah. After that, then prepare the batch insertion. First, set batch size. How large is your batch? 1,000. Here you said 1,000. Yeah, why why 1,000? Yeah, I will explain later. Okay, count. Yeah, yeah, because when you make the batch, you need to count the number of rows so this count variable you use to count the number of rows okay yeah. then you use a for loop yeah yeah employee suppose your data is included in employee we treat it as a Collection object. This employee is a collection object. I hope you know collection object. Either list or map. Okay. Collection object, list or map object. 
So it can contain multiple elements. Collection object means some special type of ob Java object that can contain uh, multiple objects. So it's a collection object. Yeah. Then when you use the for loop to go through that collection, that collection could be a large collection. Okay, large collection, the number of elements inside that collection could be more than 1,000. Much, much more than 1,000. Yeah. But you only define the batch size 1,000. That means one batch, you only take 1,000 rows. More than that, next batch. Okay, one batch, you only take 1,000 rows. No more than that. Why? I will explain later. Okay, all right. Yeah. So then, for one element in this batch, then you provide the value name, city, phone, add batch. Okay, add to current batch. All right. Yeah. So after 1,000, after 1,000, you complete one batch. So your uh, the count, yeah. If, yeah. So if the count number mod batch size equals zero, it's a multiple of 1,000, yeah. Remainder zero, then you execute batch. Do insertion. Just enter those 1,000 rows into the database. Yeah. Then plus plus. So then you add increment that count number. Next one, yeah. plus plus increment after that. After that modular operation, execute batch, then increment that count number for the next batch. Next 1,000, second batch. Then second batch, insertion altogether, that next batch, batch by batch, until you consume all the elements in the collection object. That's the logic, okay? That's the batch insertion way in, in Java. Yeah. All right, and uh, yeah. Because uh, the last batch, you may not have 1,000, right? So the last batch, you may not have 1,000. So the, for the last batch, you need to run this command another time for the remaining. Yeah. Then you complete. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the extra, uh, extra part, yeah, all right. Now here, I like to explain. So why we set batch size? Yeah. So because the DBMS, think about it, the capability of DBMS. Each time in one command, one command, the DBMS has a limit to process the data amount. The amount of data that can be processed by DBMS in one command is limited. That means your batch cannot be too big. Too big, DBMS cannot process it. Okay, so typically 1,000 row, that's the approximate now amount of data DBMS can process in one batch around that number, okay? approximate that number reasonable. Uh, more than that, you have to split into many batches, okay? Yeah. Too many batches, you know, may not be efficient. Yeah, for DBMS, the, the, probably DBMS has to process insert one by one. That would be slower because DBMS cannot handle that large amount of data in one command. Okay, yeah, all right. So that that's one thing, yeah. Then let's go back to export, import. When we need to move large database from one database server to another database server, we need to export first. 
when you do export, you run the DBMS internal command to generate database script, SQL script. So for the export, the DBMS will export the number of rows. Suppose you have large number of rows for one table, one particular table, DBMS will split based on batch. Okay, one insertion command covering also around 1,000. Yeah, that number, yeah. Yeah, I did that before, okay, so. Yeah, I have large number of rows of data. Yeah, so I, you know, I store uh, math questions in a database. So I have hundreds of thousands of rows. Think about, it. I have hundreds approximately you know several you know dozen yeah let's say dozens dozens of thousands of rows yeah. so then when i export i notice you can find a comma a not comma semicolon you know a little more than 1000 actually as i remember a little more than 1000 so look at it looks like you know this number, approximately that number, a little more than 1,000. Then you see semicolon, one insertion command. Then start a next insertion statement. Then another, more, a little more than 1,000 rows, semicolon, and so on. Okay? So then, so that's the SQL script you, you have. So you can take to the different DVMS server, you import it. So then, one sequence command, one batch insertion. Next one, next second batch insertion until all the rows are inserted. So that's the way to use this batch insertion. Another commonly used situation for batch insertion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. In PHP, yeah. So here I mentioned that PHP situation. PHP, there is no batch support like this one, but you can use a for loop. You can control your for loop to collect 1,000 rows in one, so in PHP, now here I write this way, in PHP, so you prepare one long insert statement containing One thousand rows and do insertion for one batch. Yep. Then next batch and so on. Okay, yeah. So you implement that logic, just use the PHP code directly. Yeah. Because there is no such thing like the Java, Java has internal support, like add a batch, execute a batch methods you can use in PHP, no such functions you can use. Okay, so you just do the normal way. Okay, because you know, one insert command, it's a string. When you prepare that string, can you use the for loop, go through 1000 rows to put your rows in that long string insert statement? Yeah. You can make, make it easily, right? After that, 
run insertion executed. Yeah. Then the next 1000, then run it. Yeah, you can you can do it that way in PHP. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next, yeah. C point three, insert tuples from a query result. Another possible way you can insert data into a table. You get your data by some. SQL statements. Yeah. SQL statements generate data as a table. That table, you can do the insertion on that table directly. Yeah. So this is another version of insert statement. A variation of the insert command inserts multiple tuples into a relation in conjunction with creating the relation and loading it with the result of query yeah. first we use sql query to make that data table then we just insert table from insert data from that table directly into another table that's the all right so here create a temporary table can you imagine in order to prepare insertion we we can create a temporary table after we use this temporary table we can delete it right yeah so here we create a table called works on information that's a temporary table yeah we may not use it as a permanent table just temporary table all right yeah so we define this table okay yeah all right insert into this table then by a select statement look at the select statement yeah so this select me i as i remember one of the example we used the last time okay last time the query result as one table but we want to store that information into another table. Here, this works on underscore info. So we store into that. Okay. Yeah. And you can imagine this table we use it as a temporary table to help us organize data. Yeah. So, so here, this one. We treat it as a temporary table to help us to organize data. Now think about that in your application program. So you need to do some relatively complex data manipulation in order to make your data manipulation on well organized data you may need to use some temporary tables to store temporary data okay so then you work on the manipulation after you complete the processing job you do not need those temporary tables anymore, right? Yeah. You can delete those tables after you complete your data manipulation. In this way, we just define temporary tables. Okay. Then we do the queries. After the query, we insert into the temporary table directly, right? Yeah. So, and after that, we do our data manipulation. So query from those temporary tables, you know, yeah. After we complete everything, we delete those temporary tables. Think about it. things like that yeah. in your data processing work. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that so here you can see uh, 
that's the different ways to do data insertion into DBMS. Okay, yeah. All right. Then the last one, update statements. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. Yeah. Not much to talk about. Yeah. Insertion statement. Yeah. So I explain many different versions. But for the update statement, yeah. look at the general case. Update table name. The data pieces you want to modify. Set column one equals value one, comma. Column two equals value two, and so on. That where condition. That's the syntax. Okay, yeah. With and without primary key. Yeah, here, there is uh, something related to the primary key. If you have primary keys, then that's easy because you can use the primary keys to identify the rows you want to modify. No confusion using primary keys. Yeah. All right, so with primary, key, it's easy. Yeah. Without primary, think about you may have some situation you do not have primary key in a table yeah. so then you need to find other ways one possible way people use the row number because you cannot identify the rows so using row number is one way to identify rows but this row number yeah here yeah. this row number yeah. look at that yeah order by limit row count so here, this is the MySQL way to use row number. So this is the MySQL version. Because this li limit keyword is mainly for MySQL. Okay. Other DBMs may not have this keyword. Yeah. That row count number. Yeah. To control the row number. Yeah. And some DBMS has the row number function. Yeah. SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL 8.0, or later, then with some row number function. The function could return the row number. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, but this one, yeah, this is different from from that row number because you sort it. Think about it. you sort it. Those row number you do not sort it. <laughs> yeah. The natural row number. These row number function return the natural row number. And here, this row count after sorted that row number. That's different concept okay yeah yeah all right yeah i almost i i haven't finished this part but i almost finish it you know uh next time i just make a couple more comments yeah for the remaining part so then we will complete oh no next uh we will we have one part part d left yeah so we will complete part part d then module four all right, so let me stop right here uh, for part C.